Hello, I'm Colleen Holder and this is Let's Talk Tobago. Today we're coming to you from the Tropicist Beach Hotel and Resort in Crown Point. This 36-year-old hotel is set on five acres of beautifully landscaped property and is only a five-minute walk away from the A&R Robinson International Airport. Want to see what Tropicist has to offer? Well, we'll show you right after we tell you what's happening in our stories this week. Your pothole woes could soon be over. Wasa is teaming up with the DIPU to take away that bumpy ride. Improved electricity supply for the east of Tobago and a food project that boosts agriculture and promotes tourism. Sit Tobago, ready to provide your community with the highest degree of professional services in emergency response. Contact Sit Mariah at 660-0065 or Sit Speyside at 660-6096. Sit 24 hour services, emergencies, medical or other. Sit Pro, the new face of emergency management. This is Let's Talk Tobago and today we're at the Tropicist Hotel located on the southwestern coastline of Tobago. This is just one of the 54 rooms available here. Apart from the basic amenities, the rooms also provide captivating views of the Blue Caribbean Sea and beaches like Storby and Pigeon Point. And speaking of views, there's nothing that will interrupt your serene drive through Tobago like an unexpected pothole in the road. And even though you know why it's there, it's still hard to suppress your annoyance at the Water and Sewerage Authority, WASA. How many times have you wondered aloud why there's no system in place that deals with fixing roads as soon as work is completed? Well, there was, but for a number of reasons that fell apart, leaving behind messed up roads and growing motorists' complaints. But as Davia Chambers tells us, the end is near. Roads like this dug by Wasa and not returned to a pristine state cause public frustration. Having to slow down at unwanted times, it can even add to a motorist's expense. But a renewed commitment between Wasa and the Division of Infrastructure and Public Utilities hope to take away that irritation. What we've discovered is that there are many potholes in many crucial high traffic areas that aren't being fixed. Mm -hmm. So the IPU decided that we have responsibility to the motorists of Tobago and we will undertake to try and get these potholes repaired. So in cooperation with WASA, we will try and get these potholes fixed as soon as possible. As soon as possible in this case literally means that as crews are prepared. We looked at the lowlands area as well as um, Canaan Bonacord, Signal Hill, as well as the, the Windward Road. We have a lot of issues on the Windward Road to, to take care of. Even unrepaired roads from past leakages that may not be as recent as those named will be fixed. WASA undertakes two, two set of jobs. They have their regular leak repairs, which causes the potholes. Then they have their pipeline, which is one we saw along the Cornwall Highway. They're currently going in Lambo right now, and they'll be starting up work in John Dial soon. These bigger type of projects, laying of the pipes, normally WASA engages the contractor to lay the line and also do the road, the road repairs. The leak repairs, which are more emergency, will, a leak pops up today, they go and fix it. That's where we'll start immediately coming in to get fixed. The mission of the division is to efficiently manage, develop and maintain public infrastructure in Tobago and they're hoping this new collaboration will do just that. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. What would you do if you had to suffer unexpected interruptions in your electricity supply on a constant basis? Well, for the residents in the east of Tobago, that's exactly what they endured. But note the past tense, and the credit is owed to the completion of the first phase of the construction of a TNTech substation that's closer to the communities. Omadar Mills reports. This is the switch when turned allows persons living in Windward, Tobago to see an improvement in the electricity service to their homes and businesses. Today is a result of almost a year of consultations, land purchasing and construction. And the end result is this, Tiantex substation at Study Park. We expect an improvement, not only that for the business people, reliability of a supply of electricity is important to them. I think for Tobago East to grow, we, electricity supply has to be reliable. 
I think this is one step in the right direction. But the benefits are not just for residents in the east. If they deliver what they promised, it would be a good thing for not just east of Tobago, but all of Tobago. Because if we have the people on the east affected, it means they can't get to work, they have no current water, so it would be good for all of Tobago. The substation's infrastructure took 33 days to construct, and the first stage will supply half of its 66,000 volt capacity to communities such as Delaford, Lansformi, and Palatovier. The infrastructure is being energized at this point at 33,000 volts to allow for phase one for this project to start off to bring immediate release reliefs of the, for the residents in this vicinity. Phase two of the project is carded for completion in about two years' time so that the residents will have better power quality. Along with this, there will be other projects which will improve the electricity network and supply throughout the island. I'm Umadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Today, people seek out information about almost every aspect of their lives, including the food they consume. They want details about the conditions under which crops are grown. Some even worry about pesticides, and there are those who pay attention to packaging and its effects on the environment. You name it, there's someone somewhere probing. And it's great because that scrutiny benefits consumers and translates into a healthier, greener product. But until now, most of this didn't trickle down to the Caribbean. That's changing, and Tobago is getting in on that movement. Organic agriculture a profitable, sustainable business for agricultural producers. It's also an industry Tobago farmers can get into. No longer will farmers have to worry about having enough land or funds to be able to sell locally grown food on a large scale, as there's now the Tobago Good Foods Project to be spearheaded by the European Business Chamber in Trinidad and Tobago. Which will involve um, beginning the search for those producers and also uh, a number of sensitization workshops. She says phase two will see farmers reaping more benefits. With the implementation of the investment plans, everything from um, selecting equipment to uh, training, as Gabrielle indicated, training. It could be in um, organic agriculture or it could be in, in terms of uh, integrated pest management, helping them solve um, specific problems that they may have on the farm. Tobago Good Food Project promises to invest resources in micro and small businesses on the island, which would in turn spur growth, a prospect that's very appealing to at least one hotelier. What we found was that visitors are really asking for traditional foods, local foods, and obviously as hotel, hoteliers and restaurateurs, we want the quality of those products to be as high as possible. And so really um, it's, it's a spin-off from the global farm-to-table movement. This island prides itself on being clean, green and serene, so this project could perhaps fit right in, complementing Tobago's image even as it positively impacts the way agriculture is done. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. We're taking a break, but on the other side, the programs that will give our students the best learning environment. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago. Thanks for staying with us at the Tropicist Hotel in Crown Point. The sea view is not the only enchanting characteristic about this place. It also has two swimming pools. This one, which features a swim-up bar, waterfall, lounge area, as well as a children's pool, while the other is used for diving lessons and water games. And that's not all. The hotel also has a jacuzzi with an ocean view. But while we're showcasing here, there's something else to boast about. In Tobago, our students won't have to worry about turning up to less than desirable schools.
primary and secondary institutions across the island have been given facelifts and makeovers. Omadara Mills gives us an insight into some of the work done and tells us how it will impact the learning process. Bonacord Government Primary, Scarborough RC, Bishops High and Mason Hall Government High School, among the 50 schools in Tobago that benefited from roof repairs, repainted walls, upgraded electrical work and the addition of new classrooms, toilets and laboratories. These refurbishments cost just about $24 million, but it also means that students can now work in safe physical environments. As much as was possible, we sought to seek that we had OSHA compliance. Secondly, it is well recognized that if you have a teaching and learning environment that is encouraging, then you have a better opportunity for teachers to deliver the curriculum and for children to learn. Blackrock Government Primary School is one of the schools which now has expanded classrooms to facilitate its growing population. The principal of the school, Milton Eastman, says that he's pleased with the upgrades and the emphasis placed on having the environment OSH compliant. The repairs that the Division of Education invest in, they'll get the returns in terms of the, the academic performance of the children and in terms of safety, ensuring safety because that will ensure that you get less incident of children being injured. With the division's mantra of providing suitable learning environments for all students, even those who are differently abled, Happy Haven is not left out. They are getting a new wing to their school, while other schools got amenities such as lower wash basins and ramps to facilitate children in wheelchairs. This division is not just concerned about normal school stream, but also about persons who are differently able. So we have to look at how we are going to provide an education that is suited to allow these persons to become, to a certain level, independent. 71 local contractors were used to complete the repairs over the July-August vacation, with all schools opening in time for the first week of the new school year. The Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport seeks to set up a maintenance unit for the schools and to continue other works during the Christmas and Easter periods. I'm Umadar Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. What we learn in the classroom setting is invaluable, but the experts also say that life lessons are just as important. It's knowing and understanding the importance and the effectiveness of socialization, communication skills and fostering relationships. Key skills, some believe, prepare us for leadership. Let's meet a group of students who got a head start in this area. They spent three weeks learning skills that will take them through life, from art and craft to sign language, and they put on a show as the Division of Community Development and Culture's Cool Kids Vacation Camp came to an end. It was also a time to show off their dancing skills. And the basics they learned about fashion designing. The camp took place in both the east and west of Tobago and aims to provide the kids with leadership skills and the tools they need to communicate effectively in and out of the classroom. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. And this school term, children are the only ones starting a new phase of their lives. Many adults are also taking academic steps to become certified. 
They're making the first move that will eventually allow them to become part of this island's higher education pool. These new students have chosen an institution which has provided many with a space for higher learning for over 40 years. The Deputy Director of Student Affairs, Dr. Joseph Mills, says that along with their efforts, the college provides an environment which allows students to learn and grow. The lecturers and the staff would assist you in achieving your plan goals to ensure that you graduate within the stipulated period. However, I, I must mention, as I mentioned before, the onus is on you the individual, to understand the fundamental rules of college life. And in order to have a better chance of success, the students were introduced to the Student Guild, a body which supports and guides them to the relevant services available at the college. The vice president of the Guild, Maureen Bob Guy, hopes the new students will also take the time to learn from the older ones. We want to have a mentorship course because some of you might have been out of school for a little while and your courses might be a little challenging and so the older students would like to assist you where you may falter but pursuing tertiary education is not just about how much you can get from the institution the representative for the Division of Education, Youth Affairs and Sport, Dr. William Bob Lewis, reminds the new students that they will have to make several sacrifices in order to achieve their goals. Make sure that you create a balance and don't leave your families unattended for getting that beautiful certificate that Dr. Mills is going to shake your hand and give you at the end. But make sure that you keep your family together. Over 100 students registered for the 2013 academic year at Tobago's Cipriani College campus. I'm Umidara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. It's time to take another break, but stay with us for a first look at the extensive repairs done at the Dwight York Stadium. Thanks for staying with us. You're viewing Let's Talk Tobago, coming to you from the Tropicist Hotel. Now, the nights here are exciting. The Sunset Grill and Bar serving both local and international dishes, as well as a barbecue night, Caribbean night, and weekly entertainment help to create a festive atmosphere. But let's leave it here for now to journey to Bacalet. Rene Kwao and Josan Lucas are just two of Tobago's athletes who trained at the Dwight York Stadium at some point in their careers. There's little doubt the facilities are needed on this island, but as with everything else, time claimed a little bit of it each year, leaving the place in dire need of repairs. The Tobago House of Assembly, the THA, stepped in, contributing significantly to the renovations. Let's tell you how this will pay off. New in-ground equipment for long jump and triple jump. New drainage works to the main and warm-up tracks. These are just some of the repairs which give the Dwight York Stadium the chance to become certified by the International Amateur Athletic Federation and allow the island to host several national and regional games. More than this, the standard gives the island the chance at a new kind of tourism. The THU would want to have involved in a greater level of sport tourism and that meant that you would have had to have facilities for high standard. According to the administrator, the new facilities are an investment into the development of the sporting abilities of athletes on the island where they will have a place to train and to compete on their home turf. What this will do not just present um, for Tobago our experience of what kind of competition they have outside here, but it's going to also facilitate the development of our emerging track and field athletes. The cost of renovations to the grounds is just under $11 million. The electrical transmission of data collection is one feature which will add value to the stadium. Another feature which will improve the stadium's standard is the track, which will be a high-quality rubberized surface. But the repairs are not only meant for athletes. 
The THA is encouraging individuals and groups to use the space for maintaining healthy lifestyles. The completion of the refurbishments is scheduled to be completed by next month. I'm Umadar Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Canby Mount Pleasant is a vibrant village. It's known for the Buku Goat Race and the Mount Pleasant Sports and Family Day. It's arguably a hub for local culture, sports and youth development. But until now, the residents faced a bit of a hiccup at their recreational field. They had to schedule most of their activities around the sunlight. Thankfully, that's no longer the case. This is why. The community of Canby Mount Pleasant is happy and grateful for what is happening here this afternoon. We are appreciative of this gesture by the Tobago House of Assembly because this simple act will rebound to several positives for our community. Having the field lit means that our sport teams can train late into the night. There's no better way to say it, but sporting events such as this celebrity T20 cricket match won't be the only one benefiting. Our youngsters must now come to the field to hold a sweat instead of peddling drugs. Some may even find it difficult to sleep with this bright light beaming through their bedrooms. This very field can now become the most central part of our entertainment needs. And because the grounds belong to the community, Mr. Roberts says they're planning to do more with the field. We now have a responsibility to organize evening activities. We also have a responsibility to facilitate our residents, especially our young people. We must allow them to utilize the playing field for their informal and usually spontaneous activities. If they want to hold a sweat at 9 o'clock in the night, we must allow them to do so. For him, the real purpose of having the lights is to rekindle community spirit, and that's exactly what they plan to do. This is just the first phase of the commissioning of recreational grounds in Tobago. 18 fields will be lit at the end of this phase, and at the end of this fiscal year, 23. I'm Davia Chambers for Let's Talk Tobago. It's no secret we've become a very sedentary people. Be it technology or just the harried nature of our lives, somehow we're finding less and less time for exercise and other forms of activity that promote health and well-being. But what if you had a little help from a foundation that specializes in getting people moving? Lois Vincent explains. A meeting to determine the next step in the walk towards physical fitness for all Tobagonians. The drivers of this initiative are members of the First Citizen Sport Foundation and they're here to get the Tobago House of Assembly on board. The chairman of the Sport Development Committee, Catherine Ford, says the First Citizen Sport Foundation wants to work with the island to promote its sports initiatives here. We um, certified, I think, 32 people from the attached to the community development and sport areas here and the project was on community sport development for peace. The First Citizen Sport Foundation is a member of the Association of International Sport for All and one of the annual activities which the foundation promotes is the Trinidad and Tobago Leg of World Working Day. The foundation also previously donated $30,000 towards the purchase of physical education equipment for schools in Tobago. Sport for All really represents a national opportunity, national structures for everybody to be engaged in physical activity of any sort and it has a very strong health focus as well. She says the First Citizen Sport Foundation remains committed to developing sport and physical activity in Tobago, a goal that falls right in with the Assembly's push to fight the bulge and encourage Tobagonians to become more active. I'm Lois Vincent for Let's Talk Tobago. And it's time to have your say, the segment of our program where we hear from you, our viewers. This week, our students began settling into their new school term. For some, it's as simple as turning up to familiar territory, but there are others filled with fear for one reason or the other. Whatever their issues, steps are being taken to ensure that bullying won't be one of them. But that's what the division in charge of education is doing. Today, we're asking you, what more can be done to prepare students who encounter bullies? This is what you said. I think that they should go to, the, um, to somebody in authority or if they find that they are not getting enough um, from that, they could go to their parents. As teachers in the school, we look at it in, according to the maturity of the person who is being bullied 
and also the person who is bullying. And we tend to ask our children who are 11, 12, 13 year old to come to the authority figure. It's important that they learn to trust adults that they can do something and therefore come to them and speak. We don't encourage them to do things that, you know I mean, so like be more violent, to ask them to, to hit back that child because the child eventually come like the child who was hit it. You know what I mean, so you're not looking to turn over that, you're looking to get away from that. So asking a child to, you know I mean, refrain from being that type of uh, individual in school, stay away from bullying. And that's how we bring this week's edition of Let's Talk Tobago to a close. Do remember you can send us your comments to information at tha.gov.tt or visit us at www.tha.gov.tt. Like us on Facebook and add us to your YouTube playlist. I'm Colleen Holden. On behalf of all of us at the Department of Information, have a safe and enjoyable week. And as we go, we leave you now with some more scenes from the Tropicist Beach Hotel.